is ready to go. On the fan, New York Sports Radio. Mike's on, Mike's on. He'll get you the sports any way that he can. It's Mike Francis on the fan. Sports Radio 66 and 101.9 FM. WFAN. From the studios of WFAN, this is Mike Son, Francesca on the fan on this Thursday, September 6th. We kick off the NFL season this evening, so football is back amidst, yes, controversy uh, with the Nike ad and uh, Colin Kaepernick and everything else that is going on with this league, which has so many problems. But you know what? Amidst it all, it still is the best everyday league. It's still the best regular season league. It's still the most exciting regular season league uh, by a wide margin. It does have its issues. We know that in a uh, plenty of them. And obviously the anthem one is right there. The Yankees last night with a nothing short of an embarrassing. And we'll have Boone tomorrow because the Yankees have the day off. So he will join us tomorrow as the Yankees head to Seattle and... You know, the only issue left in this season is uh, should the playoff game be against Oakland or Houston? And most likely it's going to be against Houston. And will the wild card game be in their park or the Yankee park? And right now, still the percentages are very large that it will be in, the, in Yankee Stadium. So from that standpoint, that's all that's left. There's nothing left in the race that is long gone as the Yankees, uh, as I said on Monday, the uh, Yankees aren't as good a team right now as the A's. Uh, They might be. They have better talent. They might be by the time the season ends, by the time they play a wild card game. Maybe they will be, but they have a lot of work to do. And last night you saw it on display as the Yankees were embarrassing. They were beneath professional in the first inning last night. They were utterly embarrassing. And you can't see that big uh, tandem in a big spot. I'm sorry, you can't see them in a big spot together. It's gotten to be comical. And how after the first inning do you allow Sanchez to just sit alone on the bench? Why is nobody, forget that he and Severino, because maybe they'll come to blows, but where is the coaching staff? Where is the manager? Why is nobody talking to this guy? And if you're that angry at him, and let's be honest, three out of four were pass balls. So one was a wild pitch, three out of four were pass balls. If you're that angry at him, then you know how to you know how to fix his wig and you pull him out of the game. But if you're not angry at him and he's just that much a hopeless case, and they are so much, you know, oil and water, then you got to go over there and work with him. You got to go over there and have a discussion. What is going on here? We cannot play baseball this way. This is not baseball. You're the New York Yankees. And you play baseball like that? That's, a, that's not even good high school baseball. If you're catcher in a high school game caught like that, you would go stop the game and have a chat. I mean, that wasn't even Major League Baseball we were watching. Are we kidding? I mean, the other team had to be sitting in the dugout laughing. Can you imagine the comments that were coming out of that dugout? You know, I know bench jockeying is pretty much dead in sports, but, you know, uh, I'm sure there was a couple that were just hilarious coming out of here with that last night. It was an utterly nothing short of embarrassing display. Now, the only thing I thought is that maybe, maybe, and, I, and this is a optimistic thought, an optimistic thought with absolutely no, no reason or nothing to back it up. Maybe Sanchez hit rock bottom. Maybe that was last night. That was rock bottom. Why? No reason. Just maybe because you want to try and take a somewhat positive view. He had done nothing offensively since he came back. He has an inning that is just, you know, comical. Utterly comical. But he finally hits a home run, so you say, maybe, maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And there's no reason to think there is. And maybe there is, maybe there isn't. You know, they kind of crawl into Seattle where Seattle is at each other's throat, as we all know. I mean, things have completely come apart. But you know what? They set themselves up for this when Cano was out with their comments. They set themselves up for this chaos on that team. They really did. 
So uh, there was a lot went on there. So uh, forget that. The A's right now, as we said, are a tighter, more cohesive team than the Yankees are. The Yankees have a lot of work to do. They have nothing else to accomplish here. They're going to be in the playoffs. They're going to win somewhere around 100 games. They're going to be in a wild card game. They're going to have the third, most likely the third. They might have the second. They might, they might outlast Houston. But Houston probably is going to get pushed a little by the A's, so maybe the A's will have a better record from that standpoint because they'll have a reason. They'll be motivated because they might get pushed by Oakland. That's the only reason they might or might not. So the Yankees have the second or third best record, which means absolutely nothing. And the Yankees will get ready to play a wild card game. And the uh, number one thing they have to do is select the pitcher who will start that game. Last night, clearly, Severino did nothing to move his candidacy now anywhere ahead. If he was ahead going into yesterday's game, and I'd say he was, he's not anymore. We'll talk to Boone about that tomorrow, and I'm sure what he'll say is that all three options are open. Tanaka, Happen, Severino. With obviously a lot of bullpen on the back end. They have a lot of decisions to make about who's healthy and who's not. Who goes forward and who doesn't. Can they get their players back and ready to go? They have clearly missed the guys who have been out of the lineup and missed them dearly. We've already been through that. So last night, more than anything else, what, what this last couple of days did, and I, I, I thought that happened last week for anybody except those of just blind faith. And when the Red Sox came back and won a couple of games this week and showed a little, a little you know, bounce back in their step, should have been enough. But now, last night even put the craziest of wild, wide-eyed believers away for the regular season as far as the division goes. So there's nothing even to discuss there. When the Yankees and the Red Sox meet on the 18th, it won't matter. When they meet late in Boston, it won't matter. What matters now is can, can the Yankees right the ship? Can they get Judge happy, healthy and productive again? Can they get Didi back healthy and productive again? Can they get the mystery of Sanchez figured out? Can they find a productive infield that can be both good offensively and defensively? And can they figure out who should be their guy on the mound in the wild card game? Can they locate the starters in the order they want to pitch them in? Can they decide whether or not Chapman will help them and be Chapman? And get the guys healthy and, and productive and edgy for the playoffs in the bullpen. So they have a ton of work to do. Let's be honest, the season, which has been a good season, which has kind of been pretty much spinning its wheels now for a long time. Looks better on paper than it does in reality. Yes, they're going to have a good record. They haven't been a good team for a long time. They have a lot of issues right now. A lot of issues and a lot of work to do. Today's the 6th of September. They have time on their side, but they have a lot of work to do before the playoffs begin. And before they play a one-game playoff against a dangerous, good team. Maybe not a top starting pitcher, but again, remember, that's a very deep bullpen team, and that team is not going to be afraid to take their starting pitcher out of it right from the start. And they might even come at it with a different look. Who knows how they're going to play that? That's up to them. Let them play that the way they want to play it. You're worried about playing it the way you want to play it, if you're the Yankees. That's topic number one. Football season starts tonight. Obviously, the Eagles get to have their moment. They deserve it. They earned it with their brilliant performance last year in the postseason and in the Super Bowl. And then they can think about this year. There's been no team that has been knocking on the door more than the team that will oppose them tonight in the Falcons, who are, I would say, probably right now as talented Soup to nuts as talented as any team in the league. The question is, is it now or never for the Falcons? I think it is. I think it's, it's time. It's time for them. It's time for the Vikings. Those teams are right now about as good as they're going to get. The question is, can they take it all the way? That's really what's left. Otherwise, you've got to start to do different things with these teams, especially Atlanta. So they are very much a now team at this moment. 
are going to be a good team. We know that. They were very close again last year. They should have won a Super Bowl two years ago. They had it in their midst. They, should, they threw it away. They're still a very talented team. So that's where we get off tonight. Finally, we get this uh, football season. I did see the Nike commercial. Let me say this. First of all, just from a standpoint of production value, it was superbly done. It was a, you know, unfortunately, it's become a, a, a controversial vehicle, and it's become very much a, you know, point of conf- controversy because it is a really well done piece of work. It's long. It's long for commercial, but it's really well done. But obviously, it is an incredibly polarizing, and it is going to break down along the lines that we know how it's going to break down. We've been through this Anthem thing a million times. We've been through this Kaepernick thing a million times. We've been through the whole thing a million times. I talked to you yesterday about what the, uh, the police have put out in their statement. We know the boycotting that's going on. Outside the country, inside the country, we know the support that it's gotten outside the country. We understand how it cuts along racial, you know, all the parts of it. And that's the backdrop where the NFL opens its season here. What the NFL didn't need on top of the anthem was a, a commercial that will be discussed leading up to their game tonight, which plays right into the middle of it. But, hey, you know what Nike did? From that standpoint, Nike's really smart because Nike, I understand they may tick off a bunch of people who may say, I'm not buying their sneakers. I'm not buying my kids, their sneakers. And that's true. Not internationally, but nationally. And I don't know what the percentage is, but what they did with this commercial that you try to do, if you ever can, is they got buzz for their commercial. That's way past normal commercial. That thing is being discussed everywhere in America. And they, and they put it right into tonight's game, right front and center where it's even in headlines. So they, from that standpoint, they think they're geniuses. And from that standpoint, they got their message out because everyone's talking about it. Every show like this one around the country, everything, that, that commercial is being discussed. Kaepernick is being discussed. The commercial is being discussed. So from that standpoint, they got what they were looking for. But obviously, it's incredibly divisive. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You know what, Nike can, Nike's going to pound the cash register anyway, so I'm not going to worry about them, that's for sure. Uh, but only time will tell whether it was a smart move or a bad move for them from a standpoint of did they, you know, divide too much of their market. We'll find out. And really, the, who cares? Not, I don't. I don't know if you do, but I sure don't. But what we have right now is an NFL that actually – it's got some really interesting storylines. It's got some very interesting and exciting players. It has some players in new places, exciting, important players in new places, but has all these issues from the officiating to the rules to the safety issues to the anthem issues that are just everywhere. So it opens amidst all that stuff. In that whole swamp of stuff, it opens up. And it can't get past it. It has not even come even remotely close to closing or rectifying or resolving this anthem issue. Because they blew it from the beginning. We've been through it a thousand times. No reason to go through it again. I'm sure we will at some point today. So that is the backdrop. We will start with the Yankees, then we'll get to the NFL. we got a lot to do today. Uh, the Giants... New running back who will be a very big part of your Sundays and a very big part of your uh, hopes for the Giants this year will join us uh, later in the show as the Giants get ready to take on the Jaguars on Sunday. So we are ready. Tomorrow will be a football Friday. We'll also have Aaron Boone with us tomorrow, but it'll be a football Friday as week one uh, starts with all the trimmings, as you've come to expect on our shows on a football Friday. I'll be with you Sunday. With looking forward to that. I missed doing the show last year. It's a show that obviously I uh, was a show very near and dear to my heart always was. It's a show that actually got me started and really was uh, big for me even before the other stuff took off. So it was a very important show for me, always was. One I really liked doing. I missed it last year, but, you know, with the way things worked out, it wasn't uh, feasible. 
So now we'll do it. We'll do it in a different way, obviously, with it just being on the uh, app. So, but we will do that 9 to 12, looking forward to it, with all the regulars, with Dr. O'Brien, all the people that have come to be part of the show. A two-minute drill, everything else, just from 9 to 12, as always. So we hope to see you there as part of it. You can get it at mikeson.com. You can get it at iTunes or Google Play. So uh, it'll be on the app exclusively. We're on the app now, as we are each and every afternoon, on the fan and on the app, with the video on the app, and then, of course, uh, the college football show on Saturday, and then the NFL show on Sunday, and then all the other things that we will sprinkle in, uh, you know, around games, postseason games, uh, big games, before games, after games, whatever. That's the one thing that we have is the immediacy to go on uh, whenever we want. And uh, the response has been very good. I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you who have already become a part of it. So we're looking forward to that, too. So we've got a lot going on, uh, whether it's on the fan or on the app or anything else. We've got a lot to do, and we'll get it all rolling right after this.